This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Welcome to the program. I'm Roby Brock. We're glad to have you with us. I am joined by Speaker of the House Jeremy Gillum, Senate President Jonathan Dismeg. We're here to talk a little business. We're here to talk a little real business with basketball. Absolutely. We're going to get to that a little bit later on in the program. Let's begin first with what uh, has happened this week in the state legislature. I want to focus on the concealed carry on college campuses because it was really a pretty riveting debate back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, the House passes a version of this bill, Speaker Gillum, uh, that Representative Collins spearheaded. It gets down to the House. It gets a hostile amendment put on it. My question to you is, will it kill it? Will the amendment kill this provision? It's going to, well, where's it going from here? Well, I think a large part of that uh, will unfold, uh, you know, probably over the weekend and and through the first part of next week to see if there's an additional amendment that's maybe put on before it gets back to us. Um, but on the whole, uh, you know, I think that it probably will cause some consternation uh, among some of our members uh, that had really supported the measure as it was. But we'll see once the amendment gets down uh, to us how the members take it and, and really if they digest it, what they feel like. So, Senator Dismag, I would point out that uh, two of the folks who led the amendment being tacked on there do have some relationship to the governor here, uh, Senator Hutchinson and Senator Hendren. Was this something that the governor wanted to see done? I don't, I don't believe so. I think there were just some concerns by the members about how it would play out if it were enacted without the amendments. Uh, and I think one thing to, to remember is, is there's still quite a process even in the Senate. This bill will have to go back. The amendment will have to be adopted in the uh, actual committee that had referred it out without the, uh, the amendment, then to our floor and then, and, and then on out to the House. And so I think there's still quite a bit of time and, and a lot of process in place. Uh, to really to get to that final outcome of what this bill is going to look like. A little bit of uh, activity this week, too, on the constitutional amendment front, at least the proposed constitutional amendment front. The Senate's going to get one. The House is going to get one under this gentleman's agreement that you guys have talked about, at least for now. Right. Uh, tort reform looks like it's going to be the one that comes, obviously, that came out of the, the Senate. What's going to be the other one, Mr. Speaker, in the House? What do you predict? I don't know that there could be a prediction just yet and kind of keeping with the theme of maybe of the second uh, segment with us. I would say that really it's kind of a jump ball uh, right now uh, as far as which one out of the House uh, will gain the most traction over the next several days. Uh, right now I hear about an equal amount on several of the issues. What are some so, of them that you're hearing about? Uh, the Highway Department uh, coming back under uh, the purview uh, of the legislature and the executive branch uh, amendment that Representative Dotson has. Uh, there's one from Representative Lowry that concerns higher ed. Um, we've got voter ID. Right. Um, and there's there's just several in the that seem to be in the mix uh, right now uh, that I hear about about equal on. So if uh, if if there were going to be some agreement for a third one, that has been something that you guys have at least said is a possibility. Do you think that there might be a third right, one? Right, and really this isn't even a general gentleman's agreement. We adopted rules on both sides of the building, our, our joint rules, uh, that just limit us to one in each chamber. And then to have that third re would require a two-thirds vote, which is a pretty strong threshold. And, and so if there's, if there's something that that many members agree to, uh, then there'll be some likelihood. But, but at this point, I think it's too early to say, especially without having the House adopted their, their version. Let me have an idea for you on that third one. Right. I'll bring that up a little okay. bit later on. Let's talk tax cuts. You guys have done a lot in this legislative session. You've had the military retirees tax cut. You've had the low income tax cut. Will there be any more tax cuts in this legislative session, Senator Dismay? I, I don't think so, mainly because we, we've worked and, and developed that uh, task force is going to take on this and, and have that bigger picture. What you really, I think, want in your, in your tax code is that long-term outlook of what do we want this taxing policy of the state of Arkansas to look like 10 years from now. And I think to try to pass anything this session, we would uh, really take away from what we've charged that task force to do. All right. You agree? I do. I All concur right. wholeheartedly. So who, who's going to be the House chair on the Blue Ribbon panel and who's going to be the Senate chair? Uh, we don't even know who all's on it yet from the House. Uh, we've still got to go through that that process of, of talking with the members that are interested in seats. So it's way too early to say who would chair it. Uh, I was really hoping for a little firmer answer than that. So, yeah. but okay. You don't have anybody in mind? No, either? and I have not even, uh, and I really haven't entertained uh, who, who the members will have, you know, a portion of those members will be selected by the Speaker and I. 
and, and really have not even got into who those individuals are going to be at this point. And if I remember right, the statute sets out that they'll elect that chairman. And, uh, and like I said, we're, we're uh, a little ways away from that. You point. guys don't have any influence anymore is what you're telling me. <laughs> Fair so enough. I got you. Uh, I'm just joking. Um, let's talk about something that has not been filed yet. The governor has expressed an interest in uh, separating the Martin Luther King Jr. and the Robert E. Lee holidays. A bill has not even been filed to do that yet. Do you, have you talked to any members that are planning on bringing that forward? I haven't heard any discussion uh, from a member uh, in quite a while. I know there was some early discussion the first week or so of the session, but since then, uh, I really haven't heard uh, much on the topic. Yeah, I would challenge you guys, perhaps you guys could co-sponsor that bill with members of the Black Caucus and show some leadership. Right. I mean, I think it's a good bill. I think it's something that we, we need to do. And, uh, and I think we've just had a number of con controversial issues pop up pretty early on in the session. And that's <laughs> maybe detracted away from from that particular issue. But, but but I believe it's something we'll get to this session. You do think it will get done this session? I, I mean, it, it, it'll get know, willing the committee members and the, and the, the members of the, the bodies, I, I think it will. All right. Let's take a quick commercial break. Let's come back and talk about uh, some other Senate and House business of major importance as well. Basketball. Uh, I'm with Speaker of the House Jeremy Gillum, Senate President Jonathan Dismang. I'm Roby Brock. We're back right after this. And welcome back to Talk Business and Politics. I'm Roby Brock. I'm with Speaker of the House Jeremy Gillum. I am with Senate President Jonathan Dismang. And we are here to talk about some hoops for kids. You guys were particularly evasive in the first uh, segment here. I'm, I'm counting on you to make some news in this second segment here. Hoops for Kids' Sake, uh, the fifth annual one, uh, this coming Tuesday night, 7 p.m. at the Jack Stevens Center at UALR. It's 10 bucks to get in. You guys have raised how much money uh, in doing this over the last several years? Yeah, it's my understanding they're up to about $150,000. So we're extremely proud of, you know, of being able to, to be a part of this and then also get out there and... Uh, kind of show those skills to the people of Arkansas. <laughs> those skills, right. very loosely defined <laughs> skills. Right. Um, all right, so the House won the first three years in a row, and then the Senate finally won last year, right? So right. it's three right. to one. This will be the fifth, not even a rubber match here. You guys have got a long ways to go to catch up. Let's hear some smack talk. Who's winning this year? Speaker? Well, <clears throat> I incorrectly predicted our victory last year. Uh, <laughs> maybe a little too quick and presumptuous there, but I really do feel like that uh, we're in really good shape this year uh, to be able to take the trophy back and, and actually uh, uh, show the state what it's like when the House members play uh, against Senate members versus uh, the way that uh, Senator Hutchinson likes to do it, uh, which is you know, four celebrities <laughs> and him. So uh, we'll see how it goes. So, so <clears throat> the Senate is going to win this year because... No, well, we're bringing on Lieutenant Governor Griffin this year. We'll also have uh, Asa, or Governor Hutchinson will be on our team. And so, uh, you know, there will be, be uh, good contributors. But also I think it just goes back to our work ethic. You know, we, we practice hard. In fact, we're going to have one practice before we play this game, and uh, I, th I think we'll be ready to go. Well, did you say you're going to have Governor Hutchinson on your team this year? What's the governor's record in hoops for kids' sake? We're turning, around, turning that around, <laughs> turning around. I think so. he's 0 for 3. <laughs> well, he's going to probably like a little bit more in the next segment. Uh, I'm going to uh, share some job approval numbers with him, and uh, maybe he'll have a little bit better record there than he will with hoops for kids' sake. All right, it benefits uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Central Arkansas, the Boys and Girls Club of Bryant, and Celine County. Um, I got an idea for you guys. You, you guys have this, uh, these rules for uh, the House gets one constitutional amendment, the Senate gets one constitutional amendment. How about the winner of Hoops for Kids' Sake? <laughs> that chamber gets to pick the third one. What do you think about that? That's not a bad idea. It, it'd be like, you know, when the National League and American League in the World Series yes, or the... Field it, advantage, exactly, yes. all of that. What do you think? I think we'll be happy with the trophy. Could, so. <laughs> could, we, get a, could we get a piece of legislation introduced for this? Uh, I'm going to talk to Branscombe about it. He'll run a bill like that. Uh, that would be something to be down his alley. All right. It, celebrity participants this year beyond the governor and lieutenant governor who don't count are... Who are they? Oh, evidently, it's the members, and the, uh, the, I'll let the speaker address this. Is it was more his uh, his decision? I think it has more to do with having 100 members in the House to choose from, and and 35 members of the Senate. But I'll hey, let him. Uh, hey, the hey. Democrats will tell you it's tough being in the minority. Okay, yeah. I, I, to me, it just goes back to whether or not they have quality, uh, you know, and that, that's what it comes down to. So there's only five people allowed on the court 
at one time. So it doesn't matter how many they've got, how many we've got, it's still five versus five. And so at the end of the day, it's just gonna be about uh, whether or not uh, they can pull it out. All right, and you're playing for this piece of hardware right here, but really more importantly, it's to raise yeah, money for absolutely. those charities that I mentioned earlier. All right, 7 p.m., Jack Stevens Center at UALR, $10. Make sure that you show up and watch these guys. All right, okay. Speaker Gillum, Senate President Dismang, thank you both for being here. Appreciate uh, you very you. much. Thanks, Robbie. Appreciate right. it. We're back with more right after this.